thanks for joining us today to go over the new functionality coming with version 7.1. Um, so just want to give myself a brief introduction. I'm Matthew Baker. Um, I'm the Director of Customer Support and Integrations here, um, here at ProSymmetry. And today we'll just be going through some of the new functionality and what to expect with version 7.1 of Tempest Resource. Okay, and before we get started, I just wanted to give a brief note on kind of how to go about upgrading to version 7.1. Um, so um, after this webinar, if you are in tr uh, interested in upgrading to the newest version of Tempest, you can um, do so by reaching out to your uh, customer success manager. Um, so we do anticipate that this upgrade will be available for the development or lower level environments uh, by next Monday. Um, but if you have any questions or you want any more additional information on any of the new features, um, please feel free to reach out to your customer success manager. They would love to set up a call or just walk you through anything um, that's included in this release and answer any of those questions that you have. And with that being said, we're going to jump right into it and go over some of the new functionality. So um, what you will see today is uh, uh, we'll be going through this slide deck, going over the new functionality, and then jumping between that and a live demonstration within a version of Tempest. So to start things out, I want to just start by saying we did upgrade um, update the home page as well as the admin setting page within Tempest. So uh, when you do log in, you will see kind of a, a little bit brighter and revamped home page and admin setting page. The tiles are a little bit um, brighter colors as well as the uh, uh, icons have changed within there. And then additionally, you will also see that the audit log display has been updated as well on the home page. So just a little bit of a different look and feel. The tiles still kind of do the same thing um, and the functionality behind those are the same, it's just it's going to look a little bit different than previously. Besides that, the next area that you will see a plethora of different enhancements around will be the resource management area within Tempest. Um, so now within resource management, we did add a separate tab called the net availability grid or net availability tab. So this will be found within the resource management. When you navigate there, you'll see a separate tab in the top right hand corner for net availability. As well as you also see this grid view, that grid view is going to be your normal resource management grid that you've been used to in the past. Um, but within this net availability grid, you'll be able to see all of your resources, as well as what their availability, allocation, and net capacity look like over a particular point in time. So within here, you'll be able to see the start and end dates. You'll be able to search for individual resources, add filters, additional columns, as well as then get that insight on if they're over or under allocated during particular points in time, how much allocation they may have, as well as if uh, what their capacity is at that particular time period. Also, there'll be some additional options to overlay a heat map, so where you have your surpluses or deficits. So a lot of cool functionality, a lot of very useful ways to visualize your information within this grid. And then lastly, I also want to mention that you will be able to drill into any of the cells within the grid as well, just to get some um, insight on the utilization of the resources, the projects that they're currently assigned to, and how many hours or FTE they're assigned. Um, so we'll take a, a greater look at this um, here in a bit when we go to the live demonstration, um, but a very nice view and very useful to get that high level um, overview of where your resources kind of reside, if they're over or under allocated, and help determine who can be working on particular projects. Perfect. So the next feature that we have also added on the resource management side of things is profile pictures. Profile pictures. So if you did upgrade to version 7.0, you did see that um, we did start introducing kind of um, these circles um, with the initials of the resources that were being displayed throughout the product. So we've now added the ability to add a profile picture within there as well. Um, so this can be assigned to your users and um, through the resource management screen and just navigating to the resource. It's very easy. You just have to have the image on hand. You can either drag and drop it into the circle or um, select from your file explorer. And then from there, you'll have the image. You can um, start making some updates, crop the image and how you want it to display. And then once it's saved and the resource changes have been pers um, persisted, then it should display throughout Tempest. Um, so that'll be able to be assigned to any of your resources or users throughout Tempest. Additionally, another major feature that we've added within here is the ability to um, have time phase resource rates. So historically within Tempest, you've been kind of restricted to having an individual default rate associated to the resource. And what we've seen with many of our customers is as time has gone on, 
your users and resources. They've been promoted, you know, moved around the organization, and through that time, the default rate has changed. So to be able to account for something like that, we have added this have added this time phase resource default rate option, which is going to allow you to specify different default rates during different periods of time. So by default, you will have your kind of infinity or just from the beginning of time start until an end. And then you can then specify a particular rate. And then you can add as many default rates after that. And the last one just gonna have until the end of time afterwards. So in this example, if we were to work with um, the time phase default rate right now we have, so when the resource is started to the end of September 2022, the hourly rate was $20 per hour. And then from the over to the um, first day of November, we have an hourly rate of $50 per hour. And then lastly, from uh, November 2nd, 2022 until the end of this resource, we are seeing a hourly rate of 100. So you can continuously add on to that if you want. So you can't have more than three. There's just three in this example. So um, something that we have heard uh, many clients have feedback on and is a great addition to be able to define your rates like that and segment out this information. Okay, so the next change is also on the resource management side and you will see it in other areas of Tempest. So not as big of a change as some of the others we've seen the, um, that we've just gone through. Um, but it is a very nice change, especially in the single project allocation screen, which is um, just to allow disabled resources to be um, italicized as well as grayed out within Tempest. So um, each resource does have this is enabled field to denote if they're enabled or disabled within Tempest. And now when they have that is enabled field set to no, it will display that resource is kind of italicized and grayed out, just giving you that visibility and an easy way to um, to differentiate if that resource is enabled or is not enabled. So um, you will see that within the resource management screen and the single project allocation screens as well, um, where you'll see the resource, you'll see the name, and it'll be very clear to the end user that this resource is disabled and shouldn't be um, essentially allocated onto any new projects within Tempest. Okay. And then the last um, piece of functionality on the resource management side of things is another small update, but another very good quality of uh, life improvement, which is just the ability to clear admin time and calendars when cloning a resource. Um, so we have seen an uptick in clients using the resource clone option. And one of the things that they um, people have always had feedback on is giving more flexibility on what you are actually are clearing or keeping when cloning the resources. Um, so with this, we've added two additional options, one to clear calendars, as well as one to clear admin time on here. So you'll be able to toggle those options on and off and clear out that information if necessary. If you want it to work exactly how it was before, you can always choose to um, not clear that information and keep it associated to the resource. And then it would work just like um, the previous cloning options um, in previous versions. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and jump around a little bit and I'm going to navigate to my instance of Tempest. And we're going to go through some of the new functionality that we just covered on the resource management side of things. First one being that net availability grid. And before I do that, I just want to kind of go around, see kind of the new kind of look and feel of things. So it looks very similar, just a little bit more vibrant, um, a little bit different icons, just a little bit uh within this particular page. So you'll see this on the home page, probably most prevalent, but you'll also see something very similar on the admin settings side of things as well. So um, same functionalities, the tiles still are doing the same thing, just a little bit revamped, a little bit, um, just a change of the look and feel. And so if I go back here, you'll also see on the right, we have the audit log is a little bit different. So you'll now have this option to kind of view and hide the audit log a little bit different than it was before, as well as it does, it is showing um, a little bit more of the recent updates that have been made in the audit log instead of just five in the previous versions. And then if you want to navigate directly to the audit log, you can click on audit log or any of the particular um, changes that have happened over the course of um, that are being displayed over here. And no changes really happen to the audit log itself. This will work exactly as it was before. Um, just a slight change in how you may um, navigate to the overall audit log within Tempest. 
And so if we do to navigate here to the resource management side of things, and I'll go ahead and clear my filters. The first thing I want to touch on is just this net availability grid. So if we go over here to net availability and pull that up, we'll essentially be able to see that information um, and the availability of our resources. So to walk through this, it's very similar to some of the other kind of reports or grids you may have worked with. Um, this is not for editing purposes. This is uh, more so for just that visualization, be able to get that high level overview of what the availability of your resources look like. So I'll go ahead and I'll just say I'm looking at my resources for, let's say, the year of 2022. And I'll go ahead and make the change to the dates. From there, you can choose the data set that you want to represent allocation or demand, as well as you have options to say if I want to see my planned or actual information, my month or the time granularity, quarter, month, week, or day, as well as the unit of measure that you want to work with. In this, chain, in this case, I'm going to work with FTE. And then over here, you have your options where you can choose how you, you want this information to be displayed. And so by default, it will be this net availability. And that's just going to show you kind of with heat maps kind of where my resources um, have the availability to work and which resources do and then other places where your resources may not be able to work. So essentially it's taking their capacity and then subtracting the assigned allocation to give you the values that you're seeing. So we're seeing up here at the top, for example, we have Abigail Wells, who's over allocated for the first half of 2022, but um, is slightly under allocated and has that availability for the second half. We can see that my administrator account is does not have much allocation assigned to them whatsoever. And you'll be able to see and visualize kind of at a high level which resources will have the um, time to display. Okay. Additionally, within here, you also have the ability to filter, search, and as well as add columns within here. So if you do need to add any of that information, you can do with uh, do so. And then lastly. You can click into any of these cells over here to see the particular projects that they're working on. So you can see kind of how much FTE in this case is being assigned, how much of their time is being spent within each one of those projects. And then if you want to get more insight on the particular project and drill into them, you can do so by selecting on the name. And then outside of that, if you do wish to export this screen, you absolutely can do so by selecting on this export option here, and this will export it to Excel. So if you do want to go through any of the different modes, you can select on this options here. And so we have the options to go between net availability, cap capacity, or allocations, as well as if you want to prioritize deficits or surpluses when you're on the net availability um, option here, you can do so. So let's say if I want to see my surpluses only where I have that um, availability to give for my resources, we can go on this particular mode and see all that information readily and see, oh, these are the areas where we have some of that availability and we may be able to assign some of these resources maybe you're more so focused on where you have your deficits and you want to see um, particular areas and maybe resources that are over allocated especially based on a certain degree and you want to visualize where that may happen to see where you may have um, some potential issues with your planning your projects you can do all that within this grid and then if you ever need to drill into any other resources you can simply just click on the hyperlink name within here so a very nice view, a very nice addition to um, the resource management side of things. And it will be very useful, especially when you're trying to get that high level information and visualize where your resources are. So if we do drill into a particular resource, and I'll go ahead and select on the name, we can go ahead and actually also have the profile picture. So I have a picture of Bob Ross here. Um, so if you do want to add that profile picture, it's very easy. All you have to do is hit this edit icon with the uh, where the profile picture would be. And you can clear the image, change the image, or you can upload one. So in this case, I'm gonna change the image and I'm just gonna go ahead and select the new image or the same image. Once you've added it in here, you can go ahead and crop this if you'd like to get a better and format that to how you want it to display. And if you wish to change and persist those changes, all you have to do is hit save. Then lastly, all you have to do is hit save within here and that will save the image. And then you can see I have my new profile picture up here in the top right. As you navigate through Tempest and see some of the updated and um, created on um, areas where you have your images displayed, you'll see it there on the permissions, anywhere where you would typically see some of the that circle, um, you will see your profile picture within there. 
Additionally, if we expand user identity, you'll also see the new default rate option within here. So right now it's set to numeric. When it's set to numeric, it's going to be essentially just the same as it was before, but you can go to this advanced option where then you can set up that um, kind of time-based default rate within Tempest. So you can see by default, we have our start is kind of the beginning of time and we can choose our first end date. So let's say for this account from when he, the resource started to the end of June, they should have a default rate of 50. And then we can go here and say, well, then let's say that this administrator or this user was promoted in the beginning of July. And then for, let's just say, maybe the beginning or the end of August, they have a default rate of 75. And then maybe there is another increase after that. And then from the beginning of September moving forward, we had to have a default rate of 50. So we can go ahead and set that up. And so now if we save that, how this will work is when we go to and allocate this resource, we should see any allocation assigned to this resource from whenever the resource started to 630, we'll see 50 between this time period of, um, uh, of July to August, you'll see 75. And then past September, we'll see 100. So if we were to go into a project, for example, let's go ahead and create a project real quick, just so we can kind of visualize what this would look like. Let's start with January 2021. We'll go to December and we'll add administrator onto this project. And now if we see, if we enter in, let's say 10 hours throughout, and we go over to the cost side of things, we'll see the 500, um, so the 10 hours times 50 to give the $500 uh, $500 of cost. And then for those, for July and August, we see 750. And then lastly, for September, we see that $100 rate of 1000. So we'll break up how the cost is represented by, by those different time phases that you've set up within the resource. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and head back to resource management. And outside of that, a couple more changes here was one, we also have this clone option. So if you do want to clone your resource, you will see those two options within here for clear calendar as well as clear admin. And then lastly, we have some disabled resources here. And you can notice that their icons have been grayed out as well as their names are italicized to denote that they have been disabled within Tempest. Um, so that was resource management was one of the areas that we did make a uh, a lot of updates too. However, we do have some more updates within some of the other areas as well. So I'm gonna head back to my slide deck and the next area that we'll be covering very briefly will be at the attribute management side of things. Um, so one of the new attribute types that we have added in version 7.1 is this idea of a cascading custom field. So um, what a cascading custom field will be is essentially it's gonna be a custom field that has predefined logic to define um, if I set this particular value, what should these lower level selection values be? So it gives the administrators the ability to control. Um, let's say I select option A. If option A is selected, then maybe we only should see, um, for the next attribute, we only should see values uh, C and D. So it's going to be kind of a multi-tiered level attribute where the users will select one value and then there will be predefined values shown based off of the configuration. Um, so a good example for this may be um, if you're thinking, if you're in the United States, maybe you have a state as well as then a city. So maybe you have Ohio and California defined as a selection field. And then when you, um, then you also have cities that you need to set as well. So in previous versions of Tempest, if you had something like that set up, you maybe would have to set um, set up um, city as one attribute, and then you could have the maybe potential where maybe the incorrect city was set to Ohio. Maybe, for example, you have Sacramento on this list and someone sets Ohio and then the city of Sacramento, which maybe in this case doesn't make sense. Um, with the cascading field, you would be able to essentially say, well, if they select Ohio, they only have the options when they're selecting their city of Cincinnati, Cleveland, or Columbus. Or if they select um, California, then the only options available for the particular city would be Los Angeles, San Diego, or Sacramento. So it's going to allow you to kind of um, predefine the values um, based off of previously selected value and then pick and choose from that list. So 
let's go ahead and walk through a quick example of what that would look like within here. So I'm going to head back to Tempest. And to start things off, I'm going to head to Admin Settings here. And then I'm going to head to Attribute Management. And so these cascading fields will be based off of existing selection fields within Tempest, as well as can be associated to project resources and assignments. Um, so in this case, I want to create a cascading field based off of maybe states and then as well as um, cities. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a selection field within here. And I'm just going to name this state. And from here, I'll maybe name Ohio and California. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and create that. And then second, um, after that, I'm going to go ahead and create one more selection attribute on the resource side. And I'm going to name this um, city. And I'm just going to say Cleveland, Columbus, um, let's go Cincinnati or Toledo. And then I'll do San Diego, um, Los Angeles. And then I'll do Sacramento. Okay, so with these two set up, if I were to assign these and have the users fill this out, what could happen is you could have um, a particular state set up, and then you could have a city that may not actually align to that state. So that's where the cascading field will kind of come into play, where then it will help you kind of segment out that information to make sure that you're not incorrectly assigning some of those values. So if I go back up here to create my attribute once more, and I go to my cascading field, you'll see this new cascading attribute where first you can select the attribute that you want at the highest level. So these are going to be based off of your selection fields in this case. And I'm just going to go ahead and select state. And then I'm going to add one more and I'm going to have city. And so once you have that set up, we can go through and over here, you'll see the particular values associated to it. So we have California and Ohio, and we can click on those to say what applicable values should be available if we were to select on California in this case. And so, in this case, we want to have Los Angeles, San Diego, and Sacramento. We'll go ahead and select all three of those. And then for Ohio, we want to see Cleveland, Columbus, and Toledo. Okay. And then lastly, I'll just give a name to this particular cascading field. Go ahead and create this attribute. And then lastly, add it to my layout. And so I'll find location and add it to my required fields. So now if I go to my resource management side and I open up one of those resources, we will see this location field. And you can see I need to select my state. We have the drop down of California and Ohio. And if I select on Ohio, then we should only see the three cities that we selected, Cleveland, Columbus, and Toledo. And the same thing will happen if you were to um, select on California, where we're only going to see those particular values we selected. So in this case, you can have up to, I believe, five levels of that cascading effect. So you can segment this out further if you need to. It's not just restricted to the two. And you can do it with any sort of attribute that you want. So, or any sort of information you're looking to have that kind of tier level broken down aspect of um, and predefined values uh, within there. So just want to reiterate one more time as well is that this is associated to project resource as well as assignment attributes within Tempest. Um, so right now we're only seeing on the resource side of things, um, but you will be able to assign that to any of the entities within there. Okay, so I'm going to leave without saving here. I'm going to head back to the slide deck. And so that will be the only change on the attribute management side of things. Um, next, we have also made a um, quite a few amount of changes to the resource request side of things. So um, to start things out, we have changed the logic behind um, resource requests and how um, requests are kind of stored within Tempest. So historically, resource requests in the past have been stored at kind of an assignment level. So let's say for an example, we had a resource request created and you assign allocation from maybe the beginning of 2022, so January 2022, out until June. We go through that process, that pending request becomes approved, everything's looking good, and then you need to make um, another user goes in there and updates that assignment. So 100 hours of allocation is now set to July. What would happen in the past there is um, instead of 
accounting for the first six months being approved and then just July being marked as pending, the entire assignment would essentially be marked as pending within Tempest. Um, so we have updated that logic so we can have more of that daily level um, and time phase level of resource request tracking within the resource request workflow. So it's no longer going to be um, at the overall assignment level. It's going to be more so time phase based off of the particular time for which that pending request or um, rejected or approved requests happens. So this means that an individual assignment can have different um, resource request statuses given based on the given day. So it's a little bit different than it has um, done before. We've added some additional functionality to make that easier to display within there. So we will see what that kind of looks like here in the next couple slides. And one of the ways to kind of make it a little bit easier to visualize what this will, um, how this will look and get the statuses of your request is we have added a resource request heat map um, within um, within the single project allocation screen. So um, this is also added in the bulk project allocation flackered screen. So you'll see that here in a second. Um, but now if you go to your single project allocation screen, let's see. so if you do go to your single project allocation screen, you will see um, underneath options that there is this new um, additional heat map for resource request. So you still have the same capabilities to disable it and have your own resource heat, um, resource or your resource heat map threshold like you've seen in the past, but you'll also have one for resource request, which will help kind of visualize what the different statuses for your um, assignments look like at an overall total level, as well as at the individual kind of time um, unit that you're looking at level. Um, so when we go to the live demonstration, we'll go more in depth on what those different statuses look like and how that will work. Um, but you will see that within the single project allocation screen, as well as we have added that re same resource request heat map and same functionality in the bulk project allocation flat grid screen. Um, so now if you're in BPA flat grid and you are utilizing resource requests, you will be able to have that overlay heat map based off your resource requests uh, within there. Same functionalities before when it comes to disabling it, as well as your kind of typical utilization based heat map, you still have that functionality available. It's just an additional option for the resource request side of things. And another option that we have added that um, many clients have asked um, for us to add, um, especially ones that revolve around the resource request workflow, is just some icons to denote the resource request statuses for your resources. Um, and assignments within the bulk project allocation flat grid screen. So outside of just the heat map that we've added, is, um, we've also added these icons over here to the left of the assignment to help to, um, visualize if this particular assignment has been approved, rejected, is a pending status, or wherever it may kind of fall within that um, resource request process. So no, that was um, functionality that many of our clients have been asking for and is now available in the bulk project allocation flat grid. And so the next update we have to cover here is um, surrounding kind of the enhanced logic. So this is functionality that was available in previous versions as well. It's just we have um, updated the logic of it just due to the changes to the resource request workflow. Um, so within admin settings, there is an option called or general settings, there is an option called exclude unapproved assignments, and that would essentially hide pending requests through many of the um, allocation grids throughout Tempest. Due to the change to going to more of a daily level instead of an assignment level for resource request information, um, this will now only um, will be more so time phase and only hide particular periods for the pending requests. So now you'll be able to see, for example, if we had half an we have an assignment that has that is half approved and half pending, you'd still be able to see the approved the approved allocation within those allocation grids, and then essentially hide the pending allocation. Um, that has not been yet approved. So you'll see that in a couple views, such as the cross project allocation grids and availability grids, as well as in the bulk project allocation flat grid. Um, what you will see in the bulk project allocation flat grid, if this option is enabled, is that um, the assignments um, and the allocations that are pending will still be displayed. However, they will be in a read-only state. So if they are marked pend as pending and this option is enabled, users will not be able to make that change and change the allocation associated to it. However, they will still be able to view it. And we'll hear in a bit when we go to the live demonstration, see what that looks like. 
Okay, and the last option on the resource request side of things that we have updated is giving uh, administrators the ability to control what actions users can take against a resource request. So in the past, um, if a user were to go into Tempest and they're a resource manager and they have to take some sort of action, they would have the ability to either approve, reject, or delegate any of their resource requests. However, we have seen with many of our clients that some may not be prevalent to them and they want to have a little bit more control on what actions their users can do. Um, so due to that we have introduced two different um, sections or two improvements within here. One to allow resource request actions and control on uh, what those look like on the allocation side of things as well as the demand side of things. So you'll be able to essentially designate if users should have the ability to approve, reject, or delegate um, resource requests on either the allocation or demand side. So very easy to work with. All you have to do is navigate to the resource request area of general settings. And if you want them to only be able to approve and reject, all you have to do is disable this delegate option. And then when users navigate and go to take action upon the requests, they will only be able to see the approve and reject option. Okay, so with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and navigate back to my version of Tempest real quick and we'll go through some of the new resource request options and now I think it'll be important to kind of walk through what some of the new statuses look like and how that resource request heat map will look in the single project and bulk project allocation screen. So I'm going to navigate here to project management and I'm going to open up Apollo phase 14 and I've set up some um, different options in the heat map for one of my projects. So over here on the left, we have, if we go over here to options, you will see that I have my resource request heat map enabled. And so I'm having a heat map generated based off of that information. Um, so a little bit different already, where now we have statuses still being displayed here on the left, but we're seeing different colors being displayed over here on the right to denote the different statuses within here. Um, so when we're looking at this information, if we see a green cell right here, that's showing that the assignment or that particular time period of the assignment has been approved. And so we can see that January, the hours have been approved for that, as well as March on Ashley Daniels, as well as if we go down for Donna, we'll see that the entire assignment has been approved for January, February, and March. We also have an option, or you also see that we have a blue heat map being displayed, and that's going to denote your pending resource requests. So um, these pending resource requests, if you were to log in as the resource manager, you would then be able to see um, that some sort of action needs to be taken upon these ones, and you'd be able to either approve, reject, or delegate based off of how your, ad, your the settings within your system are configured. And then lastly, we also have this red which is gonna just show the rejected resource requests within there as well. So in this case, we have red being displayed and we have rejected hours from March, 2022 for Audrey, as well as down below, we have a rejected request for Angela. And so that's how the heat maps are gonna display at kind of the individual cell level. Um, but we also have a different color schema to denote kind of where the overall alignment lands and what the kind of status of that looks like. So um, the first way to approach this is, um, let's take any of the pending requests that we may have on this assignment. So whenever there is a pending request on an assignment, we're going to mark the assignment at an overall level as pending. So some sort of action needs to be taken within there, and they'll be able to do so by going through the resource management process that's been set up by your organization. So regardless if all of the assignment has been approved except for one, at an overall level and over here on the right, you will see it marked as pending. Once there's been some sort of action taken upon it, then you will see that change. And the first change that could be displayed would be essentially an approved one. So over here, we can see all of my hours are displayed as green, meaning all the allocation associated to this resource has been approved. If that is the case, then we will have a green kind of color being displayed and a thumbs up just showing that this assignment has been completely approved. And vice versa on the other side of things, if you have an assignment that has been completely rejected, so all the cells are being displayed as red, like we see here, then we're gonna have this red display as well as a thumbs down, just showing that the, um, the particular assignment has been rejected. 
And then lastly, we have one more scenario where we would have a combination of approved as well as rejected information being displayed um, within this grid. So if we look at RG Clark Clarkson here, we can see that February, April, and May have all been approved. However, March has been rejected. So if that is the case and there's a combination of approved and well as rejected information within here, you will then see kind of this yellow um, cell shading being displayed, showing it's partially approved, meaning some of the information has been approved, some has not been approved, and some sort of action may need to be taken on at a later point in time. Um, so those are the different thresholds and how that will work within this particular grid. And like I was saying, you'll be able to see this information within the single project allocation screen, as well as if we navigate over to the bulk project allocation screen, we'll open up Apollo, the Apollo project here. And let me change the dates here. There we go. If we open up options, we'll have the same option for resource requests, where we'll see a very similar heat map, where we can see where this information has been either approved, rejected, or pending state. At the total level, we will also see the different kind of heat maps that we were seeing at the total level previously on the single project side, as well as we will see the icons over here as well, just to denote the overall statuses of those timesheets, or not timesheets, apologies, resource requests. What I will say is you to see these icons, you don't need to have that heat map on. So if you just wanted to have your normal resource um, utilization heat map being displayed, but still want the icons, that will still be the case. And you'll be able to get the visibility at that overall assignment level. Okay, so lastly, all I want to mention here is if we do head to admin settings and general settings down below, on the resource request side, I just want to cover those two different options that we have added. So we did add that allow resource request workflow actions for the allocation as well as the demand data set down below. So if you do want to control and remove some of the options within there, you can at this point in time in version 7.1 and essentially um, remove any of the actions that you don't want your end users to be making. Okay, I'm going to head back to the home page and back to my slide deck. And then the next areas that we'll see some enhancements on are on the project management side of things. So um, there have been a couple enhancements within here. First one is going to be in revolving a new general setting that we've added within here, and that's the project autosave option. So within general settings in the global tab, we have added a project autosave option, which essentially is just going to save the project on an ongoing basis after a particular last amount of time. So when you right after right off the bat when you upgrade this is going to be essentially how it's displayed here no value is going to be displayed and Tempest is going to work exactly how it how it has worked in the past. However, if you do want to kind of set up a yeah, if you do want to set up a particular auto save threshold, you can do so by navigating the general settings and specifying a value. What will happen if you have this set up is after X amount of time on a project, if a user is working in there, let's say you set this to five minutes. If they're working on a project and five minutes, it's still checked out after five minutes, all of those updates that have been made will automatically save back to the project and they wouldn't have to select on that save option. So it's a little bit change, it will be a change of pace, a little bit different than how it's worked before, where it's been that completely kind of check in and check out process. You would still have to check out the project, but some of your changes may save back to the project before you've checked it back in. So um, what we typically recommend and what we're recommending is if you do have this option set up, the minimum that we would say would be is 20 minutes just to ensure that the changes that are being made to that project are ones that you actually want to persist and it's not, um, you're not going through kind of that trial and making some updates and having information um, save back to the project that you weren't anticipating. Next, we've added some additional filtering object, um, options within the single project allocation screen. So uh, underneath that options area, you'll now have the ability to filter on the tasks that are being displayed. Um, so this is similar to the functionality on the BPA flat grid side of things, where you can say, I want to show all my tasks within here, only my generic tasks or my non-generic tasks. So you'll see that option underneath um, options there, and you'll be able to toggle between those three options within here. Additionally, we have also revamped the project Gantt chart within, um, within the project management area. 
So we've given a new look and feel. We've made it a little bit more crisp and clean, as well as we've changed some of the um, ways that you can segment out this information and um, how it's being displayed within the Gantt chart. So you will see those um, updates within 7.1. It's still look, the look and feel is very similar. It's just a little bit, um, it's just been enhanced overall. And with some of those enhancements, we've also in, um, provided the ability to see some of the project dependencies associated to your projects within the Gantt view as well. So in set version 7.0, we did introduce the capability to um, add project dependencies and have those displayed. Those dependencies were displayed within the roadmap view. However, we've also included them within the scan view. And then additionally, we've also added the ability to see your milestone information um, within the Gantt view as well. So um, like you've seen with some of the other Gantt capabilities, maybe within Roadmap or uh, Tempest What If, just like in those views, you can see the milestone information and hover over them to see the name of the milestone, um, the date for which it occurred, as well as the description. Okay, so moving on. And um, to the general settings side of things, um, we did add a very useful um, new view management area to help break out some of the views within Tempest and give administrators the ability to create views for some of their end users. So we've heard countless feedback from our clients saying that um, they'd like the ability to create their own views, they'd like that control, but they'd also like to be able to create views for their end users, especially initially. Um, when they need them to see particular information and don't want to have them go to the steps, they want to be able to create a view for, view for them. And then once that view is created, assign it to those users so then they can use it. Um, so that's what we've done with the view management area. So within general settings, you will see a new tile called view management. And within there, administrator, administrators will be able to create centrally uh, managed views that can be shared with your users within Tempest. So these public views will have a lot of options where you'll be able to define the filtering, the sorting, the grouping that you like, as well as can be associated within the project management, resource management, and bulk project allocation views. Um, so I'll leave it at that for now. We'll go through a live demonstration on how to work with that and set those views up. Um, but very um, excited to have that functionality in there and give um, administrators the ability to create some of those public views for their users. Next on the general setting side of things, we've also added an additional alias within there for your time settings. So um, now within the general settings miscellaneous tab, you'll see a new alias called time alias, also by how time or the unit time displayed throughout Tempest. Um, so as of right now in Tempest, it's been displayed as time. Once you upgrade, it will still display as time and will display as empty. But if you want to change it to hours or anything else that makes sense to your organization, you can go ahead and do that within the general settings area. And then lastly, um, I did want to mention that we've also updated how um, some of the navigation, especially in the project management and resource management areas work. Um, so previously, what you would essentially see is if you navigate the project management, it opens up to your default view, then you may open up a project, navigate back, and then it gets back to that default view, even if you were on a previous, or even if previously you were on a separate view. So we have changed that, so the previous view that you were on is, should now be retained within there. So um, this will save some users a couple clicks, especially if they're switching between views and opening up resources or projects and going back. So we have updated that logic and how that works on the project management as well as resource management sides. So that being said, I'm going to go and do a quick walkthrough of the view management area. And to do so, we can head to admin settings. And from here, we can go down and we'll see this view management. So within here, you'll be have the options to work with your BPA flackered views, project management, as well as resource management views. And if you do expand them, you'll see all of those views that have been created. So I have a couple created already, one by project. On my project management side, I have um, my projects by manager, projects by leader. And then on the resource management side, I have resources by role. So if you wanted to create a new view, let's say for your resources, all you have to add new view here. And let me do for a resource management view. So we'll add a new resource management view. We can go ahead and provide a name. I'll do that here in a sec. But first, you can provide a name. Next, you can go ahead and choose which resources within Tempest you want to have 
them to have access to this view. From there, you can select if you want this to be the default view for your users or if you, uh, or if you just want it to be um, a regular view. And then after that, you can pick and choose kind of how you want this view to be displayed. So like you've seen in view ma uh, resource management before, you can choose groupings. So maybe we wanted to group this information um, by the department. We can go ahead and do that. I'll just name this resources, resources by department. And then you can also choose if you want the filters. So if there's filters that need to be applied based off of any of your resource attributes, you can go ahead and add that, as well as you can add any of the columns. Maybe you want to know if they're demand planning, if you want the department in there, maybe their email address, employment basis. And let's lastly just say we want to see um, their resource skills. So once you've had those selected, if we scroll up here to the top, we can then reorder how you want the view to be displayed and how those columns should be represented. So maybe we want department to be the first thing above name. You can go ahead and drag that down. We'll drag department up. We'll drag name up. That's not what there we go. Drag name up. Name is not white. So I'll leave it like that. And then afterwards, you can also choose to ascending or descending order within here based off of how you want this to be sorted. Once that is saved, now all my users should have access to that view. If I navigate back to resource management and go to my views, we should see my resources by department which will open up showing me the department and how I've kind of set it up previously within that view. Um, so this view isn't will allow you to make changes to it when you're interacting with it as the end user. So you can go ahead, add additional columns, filtering, search for resources. However, those changes will not persist within the view. If the user does need to kind of create a copy of the view that they want to augment, they can absolutely do so by selecting up here on the view. And once they're navigated to it, they can copy it here and make a clone, and then they can make some of those changes that they'd like to see. So this can basically, if you want to give them a baseline of what the view should look like, they can you can absolutely do that. They can clone it and then make any necessary changes that is applicable to the resources that they may manage. Okay, so I'm gonna head back and One second here. Okay, so options that we've added. Next are gonna be on the Insight Plus side of things, and these will um, go through a little bit quicker. First one is just, we've added an Insight Plus admin role within Tempest, so this will be on the global role side of things. And this is just gonna be an elevated permission for your Insight Plus users. So this is gonna be probably very limited to a very select few individuals. And this permission is just gonna give them those elevated access within Insight Plus, give them the ability to govern user access, data sets, as well as share dashboards within there. Additionally, we've added a huge um, feature on the Insight Plus side as well. Um, which is the ability to create, um, essentially create non-licensed users for your Insight Plus um, uh, user base. So if you have um, users at your organization that need to see some of the cards and reports that have been created within, within Insight Plus, however, you don't wanna make them a fully licensed user within Tempest, there will be ways to set them up in a manner where they can log into Tempest, be navigated to the Insight Plus side of things to view those cards, even if they're not set up as a user within uh, on the Tempest side of things. So very useful and very excited to have that in there. And next, on the time sheeting side of things, we have added a multitude of different options as well. So to start things out, but we have added the ability to add assignment attributes within your uh, timesheets. So start things out this will be kind of a two-step process first one is in the timesheet configuration era area you will see a new option called assignments from there the administrator will be able to essentially pick and choose what assignment attributes users will be able to view and edit within their timesheet and so once that's saved the next step will be for the timesheet users themselves they'll be able to go in within there and underneath choose they'll see a new option called choose attributes which they'll be able to choose from a drop-down list of any of those attributes that have been selected to add to their timesheet. 
from there, they can specify the value that they want to assign and then submit that. Once that goes through that kind of um, approval process for your resources um, or for the timesheet and it becomes in that archived or approved status, that assignment attribute value would then be written back to the assignment within the project itself. So giving the end user a little bit more control, especially over um, some of the fields that are going to be governed at that administrative level. So not all attributes will be able to be chosen from there. They'll be more so defined on the at the administrator side on within timesheet configuration and then the users can add them into the timesheet and provide the values if necessary additionally on the timesheeting side of things we've added uh, one more option within timesheet configuration called restrict time entry for days with calendar data um, so what we've seen in with many of our clients is uh, they have calendars being applied maybe it's their the standard uh, holiday calendars or any calendars that are, um, are associated to the organization, which is completely offsetting some of the availability for the resources. However, users are still having the ability to essentially assign time to them um, or assign time on their timesheet for those given days. So what this new option will do is if a calendar is applied to the resource and for that particular resource, um, the hours assigned to that calendar um, for that particular day happen to be on that timesheet. Essentially, that row will be grayed out within there, and they will not be able to make any updates to um, or assign any hours on that particular day. So it's going to be very useful if you have for your holiday calendars to make sure users are not accidentally assigning time to particular days that they may have not have been working. So um, that is going to be disabled by default when you upgrade and if you are interested in enable that you can do so within timesheet configuration next we also have a couple updates on the roadmap side of things so um, these are going to be two more so minor but very useful updates and the first one is some sorting capability based off of the name and start date within roadmaps um, so now in the options area within roadmaps you will see um, kind of the data order so previously i believe this was based off of name but you can also now do it based off start date and you can still choose if you want ascending or descending order and it's just going to reorganize and restructure the uh, gamp bars that are being displayed based off of however you want that data to be ordered additionally we've also um, augmented the different aggregation levels within roadmap so we still have the three levels of aggregation that you may have seen in the past however we now allow you to augment and change the ordering um, at every aggregate level within there so previously you would only be able to augment the lowest level in this case project grouping level two you'd be able to change how that should be ordered however for project grouping level one and zero you that would be more so stagnant however now you can click into those and actually change the ordering how those should be displayed okay so next on the data synchronization side we've made one update to the excel um, assignment import so um, we've now added the ability to import this information at a project level so in the past, we've had the ability to import this information at a monthly, um, quarterly, daily, or weekly level. But we've now added the option to import this at a project level instead. Um, what this will do is essentially specify the project resource task like you have, uh, like people have done in the past when importing their assignment level information. However, then they would have to, um, they just specify project allocation and put a value instead of having to break it and instead of time phasing out that information uh, within there if it is being imported at that project allocation level what is going to happen is going to take the allocation that is defined and then equally distribute it throughout the project based off the start and end date that is currently defined um, so it's very it's going to be a very good option if you just have a rough estimate amount of hours you need over the course of this given project instead of having to break it down and figure out particular time periods for which it's going to be assigned you can go ahead and specify we have this amount of hours needed and then we'll equally distribute distribute it and then you can make the adjustments after it's in tempest so we've had something similar similar to this capability within the single project allocation view to view this information but you'll now be able to import it in this fashion as well Okay, 
Next on the reporting side of things, we have made some slight updates to um, how some of the information is exported, specifically around the pivot grid area within Tempest. So um, to start things out, you will see a new setting within general settings called um, exported file retention period. And what this option will do is it's just going to determine how long some of the downloaded files will stay within this file repository within report management. So standalone, this doesn't make much much sense, but essentially we've added a queuing system within um, when you're exporting pivot grid reports, specifically around the Excel and CSV types of ex, uh, exports. So if you were to export, it's going to put it in a queue. We will then be, um, you'll wait for that export report to download. And then once downloaded, it's going to be put in a repository. And then over the next X amount of hours defined by this reports area or this exported file retention period option, it's going to remain as something that you can download within there and essentially be removed after that time has elapsed. And so one of the new features and areas you'll see on the report management side will be this uh, files area where you'll be able to see those files that you've downloaded. So these are going to be the files um, that have been provided over the X last X amount of hours denoted by that particular option. So in this case, um, this could be for the last 24 hours, you see all the reports that you've downloaded, just giving you a way to kind of go back to those reports. Maybe you can't find them or you want to re-download them. Um, you'll be able to do so from within here, and we're going to retain those, um, those reports for um, that particular amount of time. And the way you get those reports and how the one uh, the way that they'll be essentially added within there will be within the pivot grid area. So you see in the pivot grid export, um, it's going to look a little bit different than it has in the past. You'll see this kind of um, files to download as well as you'll still see the options up above. So now if you select on the Excel, Excel flat, CSV or CSV flat area, instead of it being downloaded and um, showing that it's being downloaded, it's going to be put into a queue for which it's going to download and then when it's available to be pulled um, it will be displayed within here you can either see it within this uh, files area right down below and you can wait for it to be processed or you can see it in that new files area that we'll cover and show you here in a bit okay and next we've added a small enhancement on the calculated field side of things called calculated percent so we've had a lot of feedback to be able to display information based off percentage within our reports and so if you are utilizing a calculated uh, measure you will have the ability to, to do to do so within here and to do that you'll just have to add the measure in and then instead of having it called calculated you can select on the calculated percentage option and then lastly this is more so along the lines of the um, resource request updates that have been made throughout um, version 7.1. We have updated the logic when the reporting side of things just to account for the uh, new functionality and how resource requests are working to show the pending requests at that particular daily level instead of the entire assignment level uh, like it was in previous versions. Okay, and then the last option or the last new piece of functionality before we kind of move into a live demo of some of the uh, other areas is um, just one API update. So um, within the update assignment call, we have also added that project level um, import option. So um, this will essentially allow you to specify at a project level how many hours of or how many hours or FTE of allocation or demand do you want to import. And from there, you can then specify project and it will equally distribute those hours throughout the entire duration of the project instead of over the time frame that we uh, required you to specify previously. So just a quick way to kind of streamline what that may look like within there. Okay, so that covers the remaining of the new functionality. So what I'd like to do is just kind of go through some of the, in a live demo, some of those different options um, within here. So I'm going to start out here and I'll just go to my screen and just in admin settings, I just want to go over the first, the new Insight Plus option. So if we go to role management here and you are an Insight Plus user, you will see, we scroll over to the right, an Insight Plus admin option. You can see it's defined for your administrators, uh, but you'll be able to assign that to your users. This is going to be a very, very limited 
um, permission in most cases where you probably only have a handful if not just one insight plus admin governing those controls um, but if that's something you're interested in and you are kind of the um, management side on the for insight plus at your organization um, it may be good to have this permission enabled for your account so if you use a custom permission you would have to define it if your account is set up as an administrator it will be automatically um, enabled for you additionally if you on the same um, on the note of Insight Plus, I do want to walk through how to set up those kind of non-licensed Insight Plus users within here. Um, so noticing now, I'll have to go to a different environment to do so. So give me one moment. Okay, and so if I do navigate here to Administrator or Admin Settings, and you do have Insight Plus, you will have the Insight Plus Settings option. And within there, you'll now see this new Users tab up here in the top right, if selected, which will allow you to create Insight Plus users within Tempest. So just to reiterate, these users only have access to um, view Insight Plus information that has been shared with them by other users within there. So they won't have any access to the Tempest information. They won't have access to project management, resource management, any of that. They'll only be able to interact with Insight Plus reports and cards that have been shared with them. And to set up these users, it's very straightforward. All you have to do is hit create user over here. You can provide a username for them. So I'll just say test account in this case. You can then choose um, how they should be logging into Tempest. So if they want them enabled or disabled or not, if they have an active account, you want this to be set to yes. If they're dis disabled and inactive, you'll set that to no. And then you can choose if you want them to use SSO. And if that is the case, you enable that and provide an email address, or if you want them to use Tempest credentials, which for them, you can use custom login and password and go from there. Outside of that, if we net back one more screen, we do have some additional options within timesheet configuration here. And just to cover those, we'll also see, we'll see that option to restrict time entry for calendars right here, if you wish to see that. So it's enabled, so we'll see what that looks like here in a bit. As well as if we scroll down, we will also see an assignment attributes where we can pick and choose assignment attributes for which we want our users to work with. So if you have none of these selected, then um, it's not really going to do anything within the timesheet. They will not have any ability to add any attributes within there. Um, but the administrators can kind of determine if this is functionality that is needed. And if so, what assignment attributes should be displayed. Okay. So I'm going to go back here and I'm just going to open up a timesheet real quick so we can kind of see what that looks like in this case. So I do have a calendar assigned to my account. So in this case, I do have calendar time assigned um, on Friday, um, September 16th, 2022, which is why you can see this is grayed out. And then I also applied that calendar to the following week as well for the first uh, two days for Monday and Tuesday. So if I were to go to Monday and Tuesday, we'd also see that same cape, uh, kind of um, inability to enter in any information against there. And then if you're looking to add some of those assignment attribute information, all you have to do is select on choose attributes over here. From that drop down, you'll see all those options that have been selected administratively. You can add them in there and then provide those values. So let's say active and maybe you want to provide an active start date. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my account is auto saved. So give me one moment to set that up. Okay, so I am my own timesheet approver. So if I go in here and I save these values, let's say submit. So now that this has been archived, we should see on this particular project, vendor phase one, the assignment of attributes updated. So if I go back to vendor phase one and project management, and we look at my assignments for my administrator account, and we add in those assignment attributes within here. We will see those values that are added within there, that active status, as well as the active start date of 9-1-2022. So those do get applied if the timesheet is approved. 
So additionally, I'm going to go back here and just open up Roadmap Management to go over some of the features we went over um, that are new within here. If we open up an existing roadmap, we can go to the options here and we can see that different date order. So if you do want to sort by ascending or descending order based off a of start date, you can do that, as well as you'll be able to do that by name as well. And to make those changes, you can go ahead and just hit update and that will change the view. As well as we've also added that additional option to change um, the ordering and sorting based off of the different kind of project grouping levels. So uh, previously, like I was saying, we only had project grouping level three and you'd be able to change these around. However, now if you go to maybe priority, maybe we wanted to show our low projects first, we'll also be able to change how that looks as well as we can do it at project grouping phase two or level two. And I can change how my phases are displayed. That way, when I make this update and make this change, I go back here and then it's going to be grouped based off of what you specified within here. Okay. And then lastly, I do want to cover the reporting side of things and some of those updates. And the first option I just want to cover is on the administrative settings side of things. So if we had the general settings here, and from there, we go to my miscellaneous tab, you will see that exported file retention period. So this is going to be in hours. You can specify what that will look like. By default, it's going to be 24 hours, but you can set it to any amount of time that you'd like. And this is just going to be the amount of time that those reports are essentially kept within um, the files area within the report management side of things. So important first step, but seeing what that kind of looks like is going to be much more valuable. So if I do head to my report management side of things, and let's go ahead. I'm going to create a pivot grid report real quick. I'll say hours uh, by department. And I'll just really quickly set up a generic pivot grid report. Okay, and then I'll add my planet allocation and save that. One second here. And let me go ahead and make sure I have planet allocation, not actuals. There we go. Perfect. And so one of the changes that you will notice within here is when we hit this export option, it's going to be a little bit different. Let me refresh my page. And you will see this kind of look a little bit different than it did before. Instead of having that drop down, you kind of have the different options up here. And if I were to go ahead and select on one of these options, instead of having the download and kind of um, showing it some process, it will now be added to this queue, as you can see here, where it's downloaded. So it was downloaded pretty quickly, so we didn't really see it. So I'll do another one. But you can see it's in process or in progress right now when this pro it took place. And then when it's complete, we can go ahead and we can select on these to actually open up and download any of those reports. So that's going to be prevalent when it comes to the Excel, Excel flat, CSV, as well as CSV flat um, downloads within here. But any of those downloads that have taken place over the course of however many hours you specify within general settings can then also be re-downloaded within this files area. So we have this is where we kind of have the repository. We can see I have some downloads from last night from September 14th around four o'clock uh, EDT. And I have those downloads that I had from yesterday, as well as I have the downloads within here um, from just a second ago. So you will be able to essentially work with those and re-download those. However, after that 24 um, hour mark, these reports will then be removed from this listing. So the biggest takeaway is, is we put a queue in place for your reports to ensure that um, your reports are downloaded in an efficient manner and not disrupting other users, as well as give you the ability to um, re-download some of those ports and reports and access them at a later point in time. Heading back to the pivot grid, I did want to cover some of the um, one more option that we did add within there, and that is just the um, calculated percentage. So if we go back to edit and let's say we wanted to change the measure around and maybe we wanted to work with like something along the lines of FTE percentage. So it's going to look very similar. It's not, it maybe look a little strange, but in this case, let's say if I wanted to add a new dimension and I wanted it to be FTE percentage, what we could do here is we create the dimension, provide a name, go to my measures and add 
um, planned allocation FTE, and we can go ahead and leave it as that. So we save that in here, we'll remove this, and then we can go ahead and add FTE percentage. From there, instead of um, doing anything or changing the formula, we can just go ahead and where it says calculated, we can go ahead and select calculated percent, and that will just change this to a percentage within here. So then we can see how much FTE per user is being displayed um, at these particular levels based off the structure of your report. Um, so right now you can see we have about 804, uh, 849% um, FTE percentage within there. We can see how much um, percentage of these users' times on this, over this given year are being displayed. And you can see if there's that kind of, um, what that percentage looks like. So feedback that we've heard from many clients and have added the ability to do so. Okay, so with that being said, I'm gonna head back to the home page and um, kind of conclude today's demo uh, webinar going over some of the new functionality within here. So let me go ahead and I just wanna reiterate real quickly um, how you can go about upgrading your environment uh, within Tempest. So um, if you are interested in upgrading to version 7.1, please feel free to reach out to your customer success manager um, or your customer success manager will reach out to you when it is available. Um, initially, it will be available to the development environments as well as lower environments, which should hopefully be on Monday. And then as always, if you have any questions on any of the new features, if you have any questions on the upgrade process, please feel free to reach out to your customer success manager manager and they'll be um, absolutely willing and would love to help you out with any of those questions that you may have okay well thank you very much everybody for joining me today i'm going to hand it back over to samantha to to conclude today's training session awesome thank you so much matt um thank you for joining us everyone i did see a few questions come through so we will get those answered within the next day or so like matt mentioned your customer success manager will be will be reaching out to you when the dev and lower environments are available for upgrade we will go ahead and get that scheduled and then soon after about a week or so um your customer success manager will be emailing you for your production upgrades so thank you everyone so happy that you could join us today have a great day